good morning. Welcome to the morning service today. My name is John. I'm the curate here at St. Mary's Stoke Bishop. Well, today I'm in my garden, and um, I just love my garden. A little while ago I led and I introduced you to my sweet corn. I just want to show you how it's coming along. Can you see there? It's growing big and strong and so exciting. But here are my new friends I want to show you. This is my wall of chilies. Six different types of chilies. Amazing, right? Um, I've really enjoyed being in my garden over the course of this lockdown. I've helped transform it, clearing beds, making, uh, growing all these wonderful vegetables and chilies and flowers. But it's a uh, whole change is coming. We're talking about um, some lockdown changing. And honestly, it's filling me a bit with anxiety. I don't know if it is with you as well. See, it's not just about me staying in this garden, but I'm going to have to go out that gate soon. But actually, thinking about that, it really makes me think about um, our Acts that we're going through, the Church Unleashed. And Acts, um, as we encounter it, the Gospel, um, the Christian faith was just centered so much and rooted in the Jewish tradition. But we see in Acts that it goes global. It's still very Jewish, but people are speaking in other tongues and Gentiles are being welcomed in and Paul is beginning to take the Gospel out. In a sense, they're leaving the comfy, known areas and heading out into the world. We think about this today as we think about what it is to take the gospel out into our communities, to love them, to share what we believe is the meaning of life. It's Jesus. And that's what we're going to look at today. And that's what we're going to talk about. And in a sense, we're going to be doing this by kind of also getting out and walking around a bit. So instead of just being all in one place, we're going to be having people from all over speaking to us. So Gemma's going to be preaching to us in a minute, and she's right there in Stoke Bishop. We've got me walking around Henley's today a little bit as I lead. Later on, um, our Bible reading is going to be from Phil, who's, or sorry, from Luke, who's in Devon. Uh, Phil is going to be doing a prayer walk in Bedminster. And we have a guest worship leader today, Tim York. And Tim used to be, I used to be his youth pastor in America, and he lives in Los Angeles. And he's going to lead us in some reflective worship today. And so it's exciting to have a very um, special guest worship leader today as well. So I encourage you to get comfy, but engage today as we leave our gates and go out into our communities and look at what it is to be the gospel in our communities. Thou 
victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, a bright heaven sun. Out of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision. Oh. Well, here I am out on the streets again in Henley's and uh, I've got something in my hands that's making me a bit sweaty. It's a bit hard to hold. This is a rock. I found this in my garden and it's really heavy. It's a lot, probably too heavy for me to be holding here. But a lot of us are holding some heavy stuff right now in our lives, whether it's anxiety, mental health, struggles with um, kind of our position in life, our hopes, our dreams. Um, things that we've done that disobey God and His Word, and they become heavy things that we hold. And the thing is, that sometimes they're too heavy for us to hold and they slow us down. And they're really a big struggle for us. So what I want to do today is come and give these things to Jesus and ask Him to be the one that holds our heavy things, that He can take and hold them for us, to bring forgiveness, to bring... Um, uh, maybe a bit of new life in an anxious time. Uh, so Lord, we ask for all of our heavy things that we carry today that you'd help us. You'd help us to not have to carry them, to make us out of breath and sweaty, to make it difficult in our lives. But we give them to you today and we put them down. Thank you for your forgiveness and your new life. Thank you that you have forgiven us and that you can carry our burdens so that we don't have to. Thank you, Jesus. We're now gonna have a time of uh, with Luke in our Bible reading. Acts chapter four, verses eight through to 31. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them. There was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop, but to stop, <laughs> but to stop this thing from spreading any further amongst the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him, you be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After th further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened, for the man who was miraculously healed, who was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that they had, all that they had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. 
Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the words of God boldly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, if you're a regular in our evening service, you'll know that we often have little time of testimony or sharing um, to, to talk about the things we're going to be discussing today or things that have stood out from the passage. And John's asked me to talk a little bit about evangelism and the power of prayer. And um, two things really stood out to me from the passage today. The first was where um, they, they just, they're brought before and they say, we cannot help but share the things we have seen and heard. And this idea that evangelism is not about us. It's not about our skill as an evangelist. I'm, I've never converted someone in a lift or while landing a plane or landing in a plane. Um, but our, our evangelism is not a, a sales pitch for Christianity. It's a witness to the power of the things that we have seen God doing in our own lives um, and to be able to share that good news with others. And the second thing is this prayer for boldness, that they pray, Lord, help your servants to be able to share your word with boldness. And again, it just highlights to me how our mission, our evangelism, our prayer for our community is driven not by our own abilities or our own skills, but by the power of Jesus Christ to save. And so um, I hope that, that for, for our time together as a church family this time, we would have the boldness um, to be seeking God's um, empowerment as we we look to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to be witnesses to him in our communities. Hi I'm Gemma I'm the vicar at St Mary's and it's really great to be able to share God's word with you today. If you do have a bible why don't you have it open in front of you Acts chapter 4. Let's pray before we dive in. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that your word is still alive and active and that your Holy Spirit is at work in the hearts of all who believe. And so I pray, come Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to hear from you. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, last week, Simon was talking to us about what happened on the day of Pentecost. And he took us through what Peter declared to the big crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem on that special day. Peter's message was this, that the good news about Jesus had been prophesied. It shouldn't have been a surprise. The good news about Jesus was something that people had really witnessed. There were eyewitness accounts of the death and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. And the good news about Jesus changes lives. For those that were hearing it for the first time, the message of Jesus is repent, be baptised and receive the Holy Spirit. And for those who are already believers, the message of Pentecost is come Holy Spirit, inspire, inspire us to be bold in our faith. And now we've uh, jumped a little bit ahead into Acts chapter 4 and it's a few weeks since the day of Pentecost. And the number of people who have believed in the good news about Jesus has risen every day, maybe by a thousand or so every day. And um, if you get a chance later on, I just really encourage you to go back and read Acts chapter three. In fact, if you had time, um, read the whole of Acts. It is such a gripping read. I remember when I first read it through kind of um, in one sitting, I could hardly put it down. Um, it's so exciting to read about the early church. So in Acts chapter three, Peter and John were heading to the temple to pray and they find themselves at the centre of an impromptu healing. Uh, God uses them to heal a man who hadn't been able to walk since birth. And um, 
the crowds gather asking for an explanation um, about how this man came to be healed. And that leads Peter to give this impromptu sermon. And uh, then Peter and John are arrested by the Jewish leaders, the leaders of the temple. And um, now we find them here in Acts 4 on the following day, ready to stand trial in front of the most powerful Jewish leaders in Jerusalem. Now, the question the leaders want to know the answer to is, where are you getting your power from? How can you do amazing things like this? Now, at first, the Jewish leaders don't recognise the men on trial in front of them. And it's only after Peter's passionate speech that their eyes are opened and they realise that these two men, Peter and John, are followers of Jesus. So these leaders would have been familiar with the idea of God's power being at work in the world. The Holy Spirit is talked about all the way through the Old Testament, but they would have understood God's spirit to be active in ways that were selective and temporary. So in the Old Testament, we typically see the spirit coming upon a particular person to equip them for a particular task. And often that person would be a significant one, maybe a king or a prophet. These leaders that Peter and John are standing on trial in front of are the same leaders who had rallied against Jesus's miracles over the last three years. They're the same leaders who saw Jesus displaying God's power day in and day out. Just a few weeks earlier, Jesus stood on trial in front of them and they watched as he hung on the cross and breathed his last. These are the leaders who would have heard the disturbing reports about the tomb being empty and Jesus appearing to his friends. And the stories about Jesus disappearing up into the clouds 40 days later and the troubling accounts of the strange things happening to the followers of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. The Jewish leaders were in no doubt that Jesus had the power to do signs and wonders, but they thought they'd got rid of Jesus. And it's slowly dawning on them that now Jesus's followers have that same power too. And it comes across to them as something of a shock that these ordinary common fishermen could be showing signs of having God's spirit working through them, not just sometimes, but all the time. So here's a question. How does the Holy Spirit work? Well, I believe that the Holy Spirit is God's power present in this world. I believe that God's spirit is what sustains our planet. It surrounds and inhabits every atom that makes up everything around us. There is nowhere in the universe that God is not. Nothing in the universe that's outside of God's power to influence. So through his spirit, God is working in ways that we can't even begin to understand. God's presence and active in the world, and that's before we even get to how he works through his people. Maybe if you've been a Christian for some time, you'll be familiar with the idea that when we begin to believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within our hearts in a new way. In the Old Testament, place was really important, um, when it, particularly when it came to God's presence. God dwelt in a special and particular way in the temple in Jerusalem, which is why uh, Jews across the centuries have journeyed there to worship. But Jesus explains to his disciples that they were to expect the spirit, the presence of God, to dwell within them that they would actually be temples of the Holy Spirit, a place for the presence of God to dwell. That truth is so mind-bendingly awesome that we could spend our whole lives reflecting on it and never fully appreciate it. God, the infinite, indescribable God who has the power to create, change, destroy, mend, that power lives in the hearts of all who believe. 
we have access to the power of God. We are, if you like, channels through which God's power can and does flow. It flows from him and into the world. Now, that doesn't mean that it's automatic that when we ask God to do something, that he will do it. But it does mean that sometimes those amazing things will happen. And when they do, there's nothing more exciting. Can you think of a time when you've seen God answer a prayer? Maybe you pray for someone to come to church and then they do. Or you pray for someone to be healed and they are. Or you pray that God would help you mend your marriage and he does. When those things happen, in my experience, I want to talk about them. I want to celebrate what God has done. The Jewish leaders tell Peter and John that they're not allowed to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Will they reply? They say, sorry, but we can't help speaking about what we've seen or heard. They can't help it. They've been so captivated by Jesus that they can't stop talking about him. The Holy Spirit within them is empowering them to be bold in talking about Jesus to anyone who would listen. I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like that. I'm not always quick to talk about Jesus. In fact, often I'm not. If you feel the same, don't wallow in guilt, but do ask the Holy Spirit to help you grow in confidence as you make the most of opportunities to be bold in talking about your faith. I heard this week that one of our church members felt prompted in this way to be bold for Jesus. So when she delivered copies of the Messenger magazine to her neighbours, she included with it a little note inviting them to let her know if there's anything that she could be praying for them. The response so far has been a positive one. It's things like this where we put our faith into practice and see God at work that really help us to grow in boldness. For a moment, let's pause and reflect on this question. What could you do to take a risk and be bold for Jesus? That's going to look different for each of us, but we are all called to be bold. Whatever type of person we are, all believers have the same Holy Spirit living within us, the same power of God able to work through us. So let's raise our expectations and take a bold step for Jesus this week. I would love to hear about it if you do, even if it doesn't seem like it's had any impact. It's the stepping out that matters. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have sent to live in our hearts. And we pray that you would give us boldness to talk about you with great excitement to the people we meet and to those that we love and care for. In your name. Amen. As we pray today, I'm going to walk around some places in my local community and, and pray for them as I walk. And I encourage you to, to imagine those equivalent places uh, where you live and, and pray for them. But also that maybe after the service, you could go for a, a prayer walk of your own around your neighbourhood. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your provision for us. Thank you that uh, you do give us our daily bread. Thank you for all the people that have worked hard in supermarkets and shops to allow us to, to um, have the things that we need to survive. And I pray that you would um, be with those that don't have enough at this time. Lord, thank you for the work of food banks, and we ask that you would continue to... Um, provide for food banks uh, and, and therefore provide for people that don't have enough. Help them to be connected to the right sources of help. And Lord, we pray for uh, our world. We pray for our climate. We pray, um, firstly, that you would help us to make the changes that we need to make 
um, in order to take care of your creation better. And Lord, we're sorry for where we have abused your creation and not taken care of it well. Inspire us, Lord, to have hope and to believe for a brighter future. Lord, we thank you for the work of your church. We thank you that um, through, all throughout this crisis there's been people that are, are seeking you and are, are seeking answers, uh, whether they know you or not. And Lord, I ask that you would equip um, us as your church to, to be able to answer those questions, but more importantly, to introduce people to you. I pray that you would give Christian leaders wisdom as they lead, uh, lead the church. Father, as we uh, look at this image and we think of George Floyd and the, the riots that are happening in the States and the protests happening all over the world, Lord, our hearts are broken. Our hearts are broken, Lord, and we know that we need your light to shine into this situation. Father, we pray for our care homes, for residential and nursing homes. We pray for everyone who is, is caring for an older person. And Lord, we pray that you would comfort those who have lost loved ones. Lord, we pray for our emergency services. We pray for all those who have to respond to difficult situations um, in, very, um, in a very urgent manner. Father, we pray for our schools and for our children and young people. Lord, we ask that you would protect them, that you would guide those who are, are making decisions um, including teachers and head teachers. Um, we pray that you would give them wisdom as to how to make schools safe um, in this trying time. So I've made it back home, which brings us to the end of our time of prayer. I thought we could finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And grace.
thank you so much for joining us today for our service. As we come to a close now, we don't just end here now, do we, though? We have our Zoom coffees afterwards, so follow one of our links from the emails. You can also go onto our website or click, click the links below and fill out um, any information so we know who you are and if you want to get involved, we can connect with you and that would be amazing. Um, as well, we, I just encourage you this week to go out into your area and do some prayer walking. I mean, it would be amazing if even next week we can kind of share some videos of people out in their neighborhood, in their area, walking and bringing the gospel in all things we do. So let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you so much for all the people who are gathered here all around the world um, from different places who are joining us from different places all over Britain uh, and even further afield. And Lord, we thank you that um, we are a church that is unleashed, that um, is uh, connected to a larger church in this world as well, and that we love our communities. We ask that we would be richly blessed and that we would be a blessing in this time. In your name, amen.